Hello and welcome back to Rotary Rocketry. Today we are going to look at the Class 1 amateur rocket specifications as defined by the United States government. And then we are going to build and launch a homemade rocket and motor that meet those Class 1 specifications. Now there are three classes of rockets as defined by the United States government. But don't get that confused with the three certification levels that are issued by the National Rocketry Associations. It's just coincidence that there are three classes and three level certifications. They're not related in any way. We're not going to be talking about the level certifications today. We're just going to be talking about the details for Class 1 rockets as defined by the United States government. So what is a Class 1 rocket? Well, the Class 1 specifications basically allow just about anybody to go out and buy a small little rocket kit, a couple little rocket motors, and go out into a field and launch a rocket. Before you do launch a rocket, you should check with your local and state requirements because there may be some rules and regulations that you need to follow based upon where you live or, more specifically, where you want to launch the rocket. So, let's take a look at some of the limitations and specifications of a Class 1 rocket. All right, so in today's video, we're just gonna be concentrating on the rocket. There are some specifications dealing with the motor. We're gonna have a video coming up later that's talking about the motor specifications and we'll actually build a class one motor, but today we're just going to be discussing and building the rocket. These only apply to unmanned rockets. Well, that's pretty simple. We're just doing some small basic rocketry here. If you are launching in a restricted area, basically you need to have permission from whoever the restricting agency is. It needs to be made out of paper, wood, or breakable plastic. Contains no substantial metal parts. You might have some screws holding something in. You might have a metal retaining clip holding your motor. Some small stuff like that. Uh, and here's the big one. Weighs no more than 1,500 grams or approximately 3.3 pounds, including propellant. The entire rocket, the parachute, the motor, any onboard electronics, the whole thing ready to launch on the launch pad, 1,500 grams maximum. Some operating instructions or limitations. The launch needs to be suborbital trajectory. In other words, don't put the rocket into orbit. Well, the limit they have earlier on with how much propellant you can actually have for a class one rocket is not enough propellant to even get close to orbit so that's not really a problem when launched must not cross into the territory of a foreign country uh, does not create hazard to persons property or other aircraft in other words use some common sense um, the launch and the landing need to make sure that uh, it's not something that's going to harm people, property, or if there's aircraft flying overhead. Last one, the FAA notifications. Now, this isn't a requirement of Class 1, and that's specifically why we're making a Class 1 rocket today. No persons may operate an unmanned rocket other than Class 1 unless they provide the following information to the FAA ATC. So, let's take a look at the rocket that we are going to be building today. This is going to be a 3 inch diameter rocket. It's made from a cardboard shipping tube. This is the bottom section. We've got the slots already pre-cut here for the fins. It's going to be a 4 fin rocket and these are MDF fiberboard material fins. They're about 3 16 of an inch thick. We've got our fin alignment tool to help us get those aligned properly as well as we've designed these little uh, fin installation rings that will help uh, keep the fins all aligned and strong on the inside, as well as this is a motor centering ring to keep the motor centered. We also have a motor stop that the motor will be pushing against, and we also have the parachute recovery cord mount that the recovery cord will be attached to and that has a retaining ring above it to secure that in place. This is just another piece of the cardboard shipping tube that is the top section of the rocket and then we have 3D printed a nose cone. Now this is our Apogee nose cone system that we've designed. It has a bottom section that screws in here and the flight computer also gets held inside of the nose cone. So let's get building.
So today's rocket has a couple of new features that we're also going to be testing out. These are a new type of fin material, nice thin uh, 3 16 material, a lot thinner than what we've been using. We also have a new fin installation system to hold those into the rocket that we'll be testing today as well. It's a lot simpler and a lot easier to construct than our previous system. We'll also be testing out a new parachute. I made a three foot parachute. We usually use a five foot parachute, but this is a lot smaller and a lot lighter than our previous rockets. And this parachute is super easy to make. We'll be posting a video real soon on how to make this super simple parachute. This is also gonna be the first launch of our new Dart Monkey motor. This is a single use PVC sugar rocket motor. Our next video is gonna be a complete step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make this super easy, really fun little motor. So let's get started. All right, that was a fantastic launch. The altimeter is telling us we got to 1,042 feet, which is actually uh, quite a bit higher than we expected with this. Motor held in fine. The fin system held up just fine. Nose cone looks good. And our brand new ripstop nylon parachute held up just fine and it was a really good size for this size and weight that was a really nice descent all right well in our next video we're gonna do the specifications and building for that new dart monkey motor which is a class one rocket motor hey if you're not subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button it's also a like button there it helps us out a lot we appreciate you watching we'll see you next time